community first. We make sure that whatever we do benefits our community first. And the three things that we offer to the community, we offer them education through blogs, podcasts, you know, our website, guests, webinars, all of that. And we also offer a network through our meetings. You can connect and network with other like-minded people. And then lastly, we offer deal flow. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Jim Pfeiffer is one of the founders of Left Field Investors and the host of the Passive Investing from Left Field podcast. Left Field Investors is a group dedicated to in educating and assisting like-minded investors negotiate the nuances of passive investments. Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be on. Absolutely, Jim. You came on the show. I think last time was January 21st, if I recall correctly. Uh, certainly enjoyed having you on the show then. I think your guys' take on how your past love, how much content built around purpose. Uh, for those maybe that didn't quite catch that episode, go back and listen to that. A lot more about kind of the origin story of Jim and Left Field Invest. But just if you can, really quickly, Jim, there are three questions I ask every guest who comes to the show, just for repeat's sake, in 90 seconds or less. Where did you start? Where are you now? And how did you get? Where did I start? I, I was an accidental landlord um, years ago, and, and I was an active investor, and I thought I was being passive by buying turnkey uh, rentals and, and small multifamilies and hire pro hiring property managers. And then I realized I was terrible at being the asset manager. And then I stumbled into this thing called passive investing in syndications, and I realized I got to hire professionals to manage my assets. And that changed everything. So uh, the deals I invested in actively, they all did okay because everything did okay over the last 10 years, right? But they didn't cash flow like I expected. So now I hire prop or not property managers, asset managers uh, in the form of syndicators, operators, capital raisers, and they manage the assets for me. And all I have to do is, um, you know, analyze, vet the operator, and then I sit back and hopefully collect reports and distribution. So that's that's where I am now, and that's where I'm going to be in the future. It was so. This model was really born um, out of serving your own kind of invest. What point? Let's take this out, board, and then how did you? Yeah, it was nothing was intentional, which doesn't uh, really say a lot. <laughs> Maybe it does say a lot. <laughs> so my my goal was to have a twelve person mastermind, an investment club. We'd go to dinner once a month in Columbus, Ohio, where I live. I had no intention to do anything but that. I was looking for people that had that had been doing it that I could help and that that could help me. That's it. And the pandemic came around. Our first meeting was supposed to be March eighteenth, two thousand twenty. We didn't meet. We went on Zoom, and we've been on Zoom ever since. And then that's when we recognized there's a need for this. People are thirsty for knowledge about how to get into real estate a passive way through these syndications. And so our passion is sharing this with anybody and everybody, because if you talk to your neighbors about finance, what are they going to talk about? 401k, our IRA, interest rate on your mortgage. And then you come out or I come out and say, hey, what about these real estate syndications? And their heads explode. What are you talking about? That's risky. That's crazy. What are you doing? And you know, for me, it's you're investing in the place you live, the place you go to work, the place you go shopping, the place you go on vacation. All of these things are the assets. How is that risky, right? Instead of investing in a piece of paper, holding it, hoping it goes up and hoping to sell it to somebody else, right? That's crazy to me. So that's kind of what I'm, where our passion is just to, sh to, to share this and tell people, hey, this is possible and here's how you do it. How does your model diff? Because I feel like just from a, a gut level sense, what you guys do is very diff. Maybe say there's no sponsor that's supposed to be just strictly a capital raise. Oh, we go raise capital deals. But how do you guys structure things differently where it's not just a capital place? All right, we're gonna go raise deal for apartment complex, wash model. Is that quite, I feel like the yeah. capital and then there's what you guys. It is completely different. And I don't know that there's anybody that really does it like we do. And again, not intentional, but we figured out a way to do it. And, and our we, we are community first. We make sure that whatever we do benefits our community first. And the three things that we offer to the community, we offer them education through blogs, podcasts, you know, our website, guests, webinars, all of that. And we also offer a network through our meetings. You can connect and network with other like-minded people. And then lastly, we offer deal flow. And we don't um, we don't raise capital. When we, uh, when we present a deal, we don't take a piece of it. If we get better terms for our investors, all of that goes to the investor. They keep it all. We don't take a cut. We we had to monetize the, the business, right? Because we, we can't have a 1,300-person uh, community run without 
um, paying for it somehow. And so we've partnered with operators and they pay us for access to our community and that's how we make money. And then our whole goal is to make sure that our community gets served with um, education, the network and the, and the deal flow. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. How did, how did you cross that first deal? Like not even call it deal hurdle. Like you partner with op, the operators pay you I guess they're up, but how mm -hmm. did you know you had some then finally go out to you guys and talk to cost? Yeah, it, it was really just, you know, we, we, we had partnerships with certain operators and and we kind of talked to a few of them. And they said, hey, you know, could we do a webinar for you to present a deal? And we thought, yeah, I mean, that, that'd be great for our community. We weren't really thinking, oh, this is going to be a money making idea. I think we did the first one. We didn't we didn't charge anything. The first few, I don't think we charged anything. And then we realized, you know, when when you're a, we're not a capital raiser, but capital raisers, their goal, you know, they go out, they have a invest investors and they bring them to a deal, they get paid for that. And, you know, there's all kinds of reasons why we didn't want to be a GP and we didn't want to take some of the cut of the deal. We didn't want to be involved in that. So we had to think, hey, what's a different way we could monetize? And so the way we did it is we just charge for the access and, you know, d however much gets invested in the deal, that has nothing to do with how much we're paid. So we are extremely underpaid when a deal goes really well for an operator and they raise a bunch of money and we're slightly overpaid when a deal goes flat and we they don't get a whole bunch of investors in the deal. And and we're pretty transparent about that when we're talking to them and setting it up. But yeah, the, the whole point of this is we want deal flow for our community. How can we do it in a way that makes sense for us? And how do we monetize that so we can stay in business to bring more deals to our community? One of the things I would imagine that is a challenge, your side, I'm sure that whatever deal is presented, get to uh, some is never done all that side. And then somebody come deal that, like, oh my gosh, I mean, they're out there. Yeah. Out. I wouldn't put a penny in, let a dollar. How do you filter that out group without? That's a great, great question because that's been one of our biggest challenges challenges, right? So the first year we did this last year, we did it half a year and we were very, very cautious. And we only let our, you know, our, our, our best partners that we already knew that mostly we had invested with already that we had confidence in. We only let them do the deal webinars. But then we realized that there were a lot of operators that we didn't know that doesn't make them bad operators. It just makes them unknown to us. We don't want to say, Hey, you can't do a deal webinar because we don't know you. And so we kind of put, put procedures in place. So we we don't vet the deals. We don't vet the operators. We are a do-it-yourself community. Now, when I say we don't vet the operators, we don't, but we don't just let anyone present, right? We talk to people. We do a little bit of due diligence. We check references and things like that. And then we allow uh, people to, to present deals. But when we present one, we do a whole disclaimer, right? This is, we're not recommending. This is just, we're providing deal flow. But what we tell people is we have a community, right? So we have a forum where people can go and, and chat about these deals. So we, we, we're trying to turn community into a verb, right? So we don't underwrite the deals for you. We don't analyze the deals. We community the deal, which means these deals go into our forum and there's discussions on them. And people will talk about them and say, hey, what do you think of this deal? What do you think of that? What do you think of this sponsor? And that's one way. And then what we tell people right up front is, we are a do-it-yourself community. We are going to provide you with as much education as we can. We're going to provide you a network and we're going to pro provide you with deal flow. It is up to you to make the investment decision. We're going to put who we think are quality operators, but we also are going to say, hey, some of these operators are brand new to us and, and we just don't know. But we also, we don't want to restrict your deal flow if you're a member of our community. So it's a fine line. There are people that we say no to. We say no to a lot of operators who want to do deal webinars, but we're trying to say yes to more because we believe more exposure to more operators is going to make us all better investors. I like the fact that you have that kind of back end net. Op I mean, if you came to me on a personal level, Jim, and said, hey, Sam, I'm about to invest $100,000 in this about it, didn't particularly have all like, maybe the social network that we all live and breathe in. Word gets out when something's not out. I would probably tell you yeah. if you asked me that in public, whereas you guys guys have this exactly. neat kind of back in where it's like, hey, have you ever worked with? Yeah, great. Seven deals with them. Or, you know, check ref along the sidelines better. I kind of like that in there. And I bet that kind of plugs into or ties in term that you used before we went on air immunity. Fine. Give a little yeah. bit more color to what that. Yeah. So we're working a lot with Tribe Vest. We can talk about them, but, you know, we, we came up with this together in that there, there's traditional investing, right? Stock market, mutual funds, financial advisor, 401k, IRA, all of that is known. It's easy. It's not scary. And everybody knows about it. And there's nothing mysterious, right? It's just, 
easy. I don't think it's the best place to put your money. It's certainly the easiest. Then you all have alternative investments, difficult, scary. How do you even find stuff? You got to send a wire. You got to vet an operator. What is that? The minimum might be 25, 50 or a hundred grand. You can't just put a thousand dollars in and cross your fingers, right? So that's really scary, really hard. But the payoff is better returns, less taxes, all of that. And usually the risk reward trade-off is the riskier stuff you get a higher return. Now, I don't think personally alternatives are riskier unless you go it alone, then they are. So what I call community personal finance is you take that alternative investment, all this, that, that whole category of alternative, and you invest in it through a community, meaning you're using a community for education, for networking, to find sponsors, to find deals, to talk. And that is community personal finance. When I say we community a deal, that means our community is analyzing it and we make we might even make a group decision. Everyone makes their own individual decision, but you'll see a few people come on and say, here's where I like the deal. A few others will say, here's where I don't. And there'll be a discussion. And at the end, some people will say, I'm going to take a chance on this because I like it. And somebody else will say, I, I see what you're saying. It's just, it's not my, my bad. You know, this isn't what, something I want to get into, but and so some do and some don't. That's what community personal finance is, is having the community help you make the decision. And for me, that is what really allows alternatives to, to really excel because alternative investments are long-term illiquid investments that are completely out of your control, at least the syndication kind, right? And so how do you get around that? How do you, it takes five years for a deal to go full cycle. You're not going to know if it's any good or not for five years. So how do you know? You talk to somebody who's invested with that, that person for a year already and they know, hey, the wire went and it went someplace. Now I'm getting cash flow. I'm getting reports. Things are looking okay, right? That doesn't mean you're not going to lose money on deals because you absolutely will. But your results will be a lot better than if you go it alone or if you stick to traditional personal finance. Again, not a financial advisor, not a tax advisor. These all are all opinion. And it's based on my experience. In your experience is is, is in value. And I go back when I was, that's how I got into it. Until in the water invest and still waiting on some of those deals actually start. So, I mean, I've got, I've, I've heard right. some licks the hard way. And it's like, my gosh, if I had, you know, five people to review it and go, eh, I don't know about this. Have you thought about, and like, man, there's so many things Absolutely. I would have thought about very different now than I, uh, than maybe I did then. So anyway, those are, those are my own personal. Well, that, that's the whole point, right? Is, is it's shortcutting. Right. It's saying, okay, Sam, we can skip your first two years of trial and error or Jim, because I have the same investments five, six, seven years out that haven't paid me anything. And I haven't heard from the, the person in three years. I have those deals too. Well, you know what? If, if somebody joins a community and I always say, I am biased. Left field investors, I think is great, but there's other communities out there that are awesome too. You got to find one that fits you. But once you find that, then you're not going to have to go through that. You're not going to have to have those first few deals that have no cash flow for six years or that you know you never hear from the operator because you're going to be in a community and, and you'll reduce that risk significantly and you'll jumpstart by a couple of years. Absolutely. No, I love it. Love what you guys are doing. And that's why, again, I go back to the comment very different than a lot of probably why it's just taken off like wildfire. How has your, how has your vest changed from maybe how? Well, you know, everything's changed, right? The market's changed interest rates changed, uh, everything's changed. So I, the one thing I take from traditional personal finance is dollar cost average. I cannot time the market. I don't know where we are in the market. I'll never know. And the more confident you are than you tell me that you know what's happening, the farther away from you I'm going to run because nobody knows. So what am I doing now? I am doing what I was doing before, but I'm being more cautious. I'm probably taking smaller swings. You know, I'm investing the minimum in lots of different deals, lots of different asset classes. I'm paying more attention to debt. I'm either looking for something that's really short term or really long term, right? Because the because the middle is where I think it gets, you know, I want to de-risk it either right away with a short term investment or I want a longer term investment that will hopefully get, you know, have time to get through the bumps that we, that might be coming. So those are some of the minor changes I've made, but I'm still allocating capital. I don't want to sit on the sidelines because I don't know where we are in the market. Right. No, absolutely. How about the way you guys as a, as a community, I know, again, this is a DIY probably happens all different, but how, how, how are you guys working now alongside of TribeVest? I know that that was probably. Yeah. So TribeVest is just, they're, they're a group investing platform, right? So they help people come together, invest together. And the typical way they used to do it, and they still do it this way, is let's say uh, me and Sam and eight of our buddies are going to get together and we're all going to throw in some cash 
and go investing together. Well, Trivest makes it easy. They do the bank account. They prepare the LLC. They do the operating agreement. They do everything. They have a portal so we can all just send our money in and then we'll go out and, and do all these investments. And what does that help you with? It reduces your minimums. It increases your diversification. And if Sam brings a deal to the group of 10, we're going to argue about it, right? I'm going to say, Sam, what about this? And Sam's going to argue back. And what happens then? we all get smarter, right? We all learn from each other. So that was what was awesome about TribeBest. And then they took it a step further. Now they have what they call open tribe. So every time we do a deal webinar at Left Field Investors, TribeBest will open an open tribe next to it. Nice thing about open tribes is they are managed by TribeBest. So TribeBest does the taxes, does the K-1s, you know, hounds people for money, sets up the LLC, does everything. All you have to do is send in your money. Now the open tribe is a single purpose entity. So it's going to invest in one deal. What that allows us to do, let's say, Sam, you bring us a deal and the minimum is a hundred grand just for fun, right? So if someone's going to invest a hundred grand, they invest direct with you. They don't have to go through the open tribe, but we can make the open tribe minimum 10 grand or 20 grand. So now someone who maybe doesn't know Sam and wants to take a small swing and just sample it or doesn't know your asset class or just doesn't have enough capital to go in at a hundred grand, they can go at 10 or 15 and 20, $20,000 and still get in the deal. So then the open tribe will just have maybe 10 or 20 members and it'll just be one LP investor in the, uh, in, in the investment. So it's just a great way. You still get all of the stuff that you get on the other kind of tribes, but this tribe is managed by tribe best and it just makes it easy to, to to diversify and get into more deals with with a smaller amount of capital. Right. And that eliminates a common sponsor that too much work. Yeah. That's all you got. You're probably invest too. Uh, eliminates a lot of the sponsor hurt out. So that's, Absolutely. Uh, that's a cool thing. You guys are growing like wildfire. Your tribe, are grow tribe is growing. You found a way to uh, really package deals up, find a unique way to invest. One big goal that you guys left. I think our, our main goal is, you know, we're, we're finally going from, uh, we didn't do anything on purpose. None of this is intentional to actually doing things with purpose, right? We are setting up a business. We're going to run this like a business. We are going, and what is the result is going to be a better experience for our community, our investors, and our partners. And that's the goal for 2023 is to really get things humming. We do not want to grow our group just to grow it. We want to grow with quality, like-minded people. And like-minded does not mean we all think the same. We're robots. Like-minded means we are all pursuing financial freedom, whatever that means to us. And we want to help each other and grow together. And so those are the kind of people that we want in our community. And the more people we get in our community, the only reason we want it to grow, number one, to help other people. Number two, the more people we get in the community, the more operators are going to want to bring us deals and give us better terms. So, so it goes both ways, right? We're doing this community first. We always think of our, our members first, and that's the most important thing to us. I love it. Jim, if our listeners want to get in touch with you or learn more about you, what is the best way to You can go to uh, leftfieldinvestors.com. There's a button to schedule a call if you want. Um, and you can talk to one of our founders and just get more information. You can hit our subscribe button and you'll get right on our uh, uh, list to uh, get emails from us about webinars, and other deal flow and other things that are happening. If you want to connect with me directly, jim at leftfieldinvestors.com is my email. Um, I enjoy talking to investors and I spend a good part of my day doing that. Awesome. Jim, thank you again for your time today. Pleasure and glad to uh, have you back on. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate the invite. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big.